It's been shocking to see the trillions of dollars being spent like it's nothing, and yet that's your taxpayer dollars. That's the inflation that's going to take place as a result of all of this. And nobody seems to mind. Hey, we got to handle it. We got to take care of this and that. We got to get the roads built. We got to get these people over there and those people down here. So it has to happen. But does it? That's what we'll talk about today. The first thing is the trillions and trillions of dollars that have been spent. That's your taxpayer dollars. The second thing is, where else has this money gone overseas? The third is people can't take it anymore. That's you. That's the saver. That's the person who's just trying to make ends meet and cannot. I'm going to discuss it all. You don't want to miss it. Let's begin. I wanted to begin the video right here. The first thing that I need to cover is really in connection with the video that I did previous to this one, which is about the $1.7 trillion, 4,000 page monster omnibus spending bill. And essentially the government goes out there and says, okay, we're going to spend in the fiscal year 2023, we're going to spend all of these billions here and billions there and millions here. And of course you, the taxpayer have to pay for it. Now, what they're saying is that they want to give $45 billion in additional funding for Ukraine. The reason they want to do this is that they say this is for American interest. This protects us. And this, what they're really discussing is the fact that this is a proxy war that's being fought with Russia. And now it isn't even Ukrainian forces. It seems like it's just NATO forces, NATO military and NATO munitions and military, you know, all the different uh, devices and whatever they're sending over there are being used against Russia. So it is in fact escalated dramatically over the last whatever it's been a year or so. And this is very important. Now I need to interject for a moment here that I'm not talking about the politics of this. You could say you like one leader or another, or this country or that country. What I'm trying to talk about is simply the economic aspects of this. That's it. So please understand that. I'm not making judgments. I'm not taking sides in this. I never do. I don't talk about the politics, except for when this is about the, really the economics of it all. So please keep that in mind as we go through this video. Okay, look at this. You can see that in that previous video, here I am looking through the 4,000 page bill and I found it. If you haven't seen this video, it is the previous one to this one. I break down what you need to know about this massive bill that is going to create additional inflation. You devalue the dollars the more you pump into the system. This is a matter of fact. And so if you want to check that out, please do, because it's going to connect in with what I talked about here. But I know many people that watch these videos, watch them every single day because they want to keep up with the news. So this just basically talks about the fact that uh, the leader of the US and the leader of Ukraine met inside Washington, DC. And part of what he said was, this is the quote of the leader of Ukraine, your money is not charity. It is an investment in the global security and democracy that we handle in the most responsible way. However, the artillery was not enough and that the US could speed up Ukraine's triumph over Moscow. We have the artillery, yes, thank you. Is it enough? Not really. So I wanted to talk about that because it seems like uh, despite all the billions that have gone to Ukraine, that it's it's not being considered to be enough. So you will be sending more. You're the U.S. taxpayer. You're going to be sending more money over there, billions of dollars worth. And whether you agree with that or not, it's happening. That is happening. And whether it's going to be 45 billion or 40 billion or whatever, it's just on top of already spending so many billions of dollars. It's not just Ukraine, though. You see, foreign aid goes in many different directions. And I think it's very important to look at the history behind those connections and not just judge based on what's happening today because you'll make a mistake. Here you go. It comes as Congress finalizes the new package of $45 billion in emergency assistance to Ukraine on top of some $50 billion already sent this year. So you're looking at approximately $100 billion that has been sent to Ukraine. 
Biden has now unveiled almost $2 billion in military supplies. They are sending the Patriot Air Defense System over there. So we're talking about billions being spent on this particular instance at this time, a proxy war between the United States or the West against Russia. This is the most advanced the tensions have ever been between these two sides. Um, and I would say that it is very worrisome because now um, it, this doesn't end well. Let's just put it that way, okay? But where else has money gone to? Well, Afghanistan's Taliban displays pallets of cash received for, quote, humanitarian aid. The Da Bank of Afghanistan, the Taliban-controlled Central Bank of Afghanistan, tweets images of the cash. So you could see that, again, billions and billions and billions of dollars have gone to different places. And you could say you like this group or you don't like them or you trust them or you don't trust them. That's up to you to decide. Okay, I'll leave that with you. The point, and the reason I mention this, is that we are spending so much money. Every country is doing this, spending billions of dollars trying to fund one country or another for one cause or another. And you, in the end, have to pay for it. If you think that it's because of you know, righteousness or, or because you believe it's for national security, if you actually look at the total dollars that are spent on any, any form of taxation, you look at it and you see the expenditure and you see to, my, to me and my life, out of every dollar I spend, how much actually goes to benefit me and my family. And you understand that it's literally pennies, just pennies. The rest of it goes out there to all of these multinational conglomerates that may or may not do anything to your advantage. If you only understood that and you looked at the details, I've, I've broken it down here many, many times on this channel. And if you're interested in more, I will bring that to you. But unless you comment below and let me know that, I can't be able to determine so. So please do so, okay? There's a lot of information that needs to be discussed. And the history is very important. Foreign aid spending can have a severe negative impact on the U.S. economy. The U.S. is currently facing an ever-rising debt and deficits, and spending billions of dollars on foreign aid only exacerbates the problem. Not only does it put an additional strain on the budget, but it can also create an inflationary pressure, causing prices to rise and the value of the dollar to fall. Previous attempts at foreign aid have also caused significant issues. For example, when the U.S. funded military aid to the Mujahideen in Afghanistan during the Soviet-Afghan War, the money was used to create what would eventually become the Taliban. When the U.S. attempted to prop up the government of Afghanistan in the 1980s, the money wound up in the hands of the Taliban. Foreign aid spending can have a detrimental effect on the U.S. economy, particularly when debt and deficits are already high. Not only does it put a strain on the budget, but it can also create an inflationary pressure and previous attempts at foreign aid have often backfired, leading to an even more instability in the region. We see this now, we see this today in history, and as far along as you want to take it. But I believe, in my personal opinion, that whenever we send money to one country or another or spend trillions here and trillions there, it doesn't benefit the people. That's the way it works. And even the people of those other countries where the money's going to. Believe it or not, that's the way it works. And see, so you have this. Millions at risk of losing Medicaid in the spring under the provision tucked inside the $1.7 trillion federal spending bill. So, is it benefiting you? Spending 1.7 trillion, or are they taking stuff away from you? I think people need to realize this. Millions of people who are enrolled in Medicaid uh, during the 2020 situation losing their coverage starting in the spring under the new bill. You could see here Congress had previously barred states from kicking people off Medicaid for the duration of the public health emergency, which has led to a historic number of people involved. So they want to get rid of those people that are on it to save some cash, it looks like. Trillions and trillions. 
The number gets bigger each year. Each December, a group of economists and actuaries in an obscure federal office emerge with a new report estimating how much the U.S. spent on health care in the year before. The most recent report, covering 2021, put the tab at $4.3 trillion. Warren Buffett has famously dubbed that level of spending a tapeworm on the U.S. economy. Unbelievable by comparison, showing the differences. Um, you know, in the case of the U.S., that would be 18% of the GDP. The GDP is the total economy. The U.K., Germany, Canada, Japan, Australia, by comparison, all spend between 10 and 12% of the GDP on healthcare. So, what are you getting here? You're about to spend more money than ever before, more money than ever, and yet you're getting less than other countries are. Do you see a problem here? Do you think maybe that these pharmaceutical companies, healthcare companies are the ones that are winning? And what about the industrial complex um, that is part of the military? Well, maybe I could say it that way. Um, and do you think that these massive companies, Raytheon, all the others that really get all of that money, it's the contractors and things that get that money. Lockheed Martin, I mean, there's, there's so many. They get the money. It's not like you're, you're, you know, foreign aid, oh, we're helping a bunch of people. No, you're not. If you look into the details, you see, and the same thing with the Medicare, Medicaid spending that, you know, you want to help people, but the money is used in a way that benefits the multinational conglomerates, the big corporations. Now this here, planning for dry times, the West considers more reservoirs and aquifers. Now, do you think it's a good idea? You got drought everywhere. You got all these problems, water problems. Sometimes it's in one area, it could be, you know, just massive rainfalls. It's flooding everywhere for people. And then you go onto the other side of the U.S. and it's super dry. People are in dire straits. You know, you spend money to fix this or to, you know, help it. Okay, you could argue that's a good spend of that cash, of your taxpayer dollar. But you can argue some others are just not. And I brought that up in the previous video to this one. It's you and I that feels the inflation, whereas those buying the art, those buying the collectible cars, they don't feel the inflation. And so when they print all this cash and throw it out there, whether it's going to foreign aid or whether it's going to some, you buy some useless bonds, well then, it's going to impact those in the bottom, let's say 99%. That's the way it works. So. I wanted to bring that information to you. If you found it informative, what you've got to do is hit that subscribe button that's down near the like button. Hit that and I will see you tomorrow. Take care.